Hey YouTube, Moose Cow here. Back with another exciting recap video of our game of Axis and Allies 1940 Global, uh, complete with a few house mods. I'm playing with uh, Mike as the Allies against uh, Rick, who is the Axis. Um, as you can see, we played from the top of round two through the middle of round three. A lot of a lot of interesting stuff has happened so far in this uh, in this game. Um, let's see, where do I begin? Let's start with Germany. Okay. So the only thing Germany did in round two was they attacked a British cruiser that was in '96, and then outside of that, it was just a lot of fortification. Let's pick that up. A lot of uh, non-combat movement, rearranging. The structure of things in Europe. He had a lot of units in Holland, Belgium, for instance, um, prepping and was prepping for the uh, the Eastern Front. Now, uh, at, and then there's the Soviets, of course. They just also fortified, brought more units over from here. Uh, quick little clarification: um, on the last video, I had six units in Saka, I think it was, or yeah, Saka. That was incorrect, I misheard him on the phone. He had moved them to Barantia. So, as you can see, two turns have happened and they've been moving, moving on over. So that's, a, that's 11 infantry right there. Okay. Let's see. And Japan. Let's see, Japan. I'm gonna make this mobile now. Forgive a little bit of shakiness. Okay. Japan. All of this stuff right here is in Hunan. There was a little bit of fighting, uh, turn two and three for Japan with China. There were units in Hobei, he was a unit in Kwai Chow. Um, uh, so you can no, no, ha no fighting yet between Yunnan and uh, uh, this overwhelming monstrosity of a force. Rick doesn't go in on anything unless he's got the odds, generally, so... Um, that's the state state of things right there. You see, we got a few. We got a another American fighter. That American fighter came over from Guam. Guam knocked out two unguarded transports. He missed that and paid the price, and then landed in Yunnan. Uh, some British units came up. Um, Japan on turn two attacked the Allies, declared war on the Allies except for Russia. So they took out the Philippines, they took French Indochina away from Vichy, they, they, take, they took Malaya um, with, many, with actual uh, surprising, amount of, surprising amount of casualties. We were, we were able to knock out uh, three infantry and a fighter because he really wanted to take Malaya. So that's gone. On round three, uh, he took Borneo. Uh, round two, since we were attacked, uh, America was now in the war, and I brought a few, a few naval units and some air force down here, and that was a mistake. So he came in with his naval force from 37 and I believe 35, and uh, wiped them out. I had flashbacks to our last game, and uh, first round of combat, I scored no hits. I scrambled two fighters, two American fighters from here, and I scored no hits. Uh, and then the second round, I damaged both battleships. Um, oh man, uh, never go, never go light with America. Um, I get a get the itching feeling to do something right away as America, but you really just gotta bide your time. So I'm learning that with each game. Brought a few. America also brought a few, uh, couple infantry units down to Queensland while they were at it. Speaking of which, before that happened, um, Anzac, or sorry, before this happened, Anzac took out um, a destroyer that was in 56, a Japanese destroyer in 56. Um, so there was a, a Anzac destroyer here. Um, and then also Anzac was able to use the transport here, load up two infantry, drop them off in Java. As you can see, transport sacrificed. The other transport brought two guys to Dutch New Guinea, and as you can see, that was sacrificed as well. But always struggling to try and get more money for Anzac. Uh, the two fighters here were involved with the battle in 56. They landed in Northern Territory, so they were not able to help out with this battle. Maybe that's why he went in on it. Um, 
up here we got ourselves a little destroyer standoff um, if anyone's curious these are just my mark my markers me for me visually to see the range of where he can attack and I don't always up I don't always update that but so you see them on on uh, other videos that I've done but I usually um, forget to update them so for the most part ignore those but that's just a little uh, visual thing for me to help better see what his range is not his air force but just his naval range let's see going on over okay where are they so, so India looks like this let's get a little zoom in over here again that is a mess <laughs> okay moving on over um, Britain I think that Britain has the most been the most interesting to watch so far good job Mike so the naval force that was in 110 went down here to 90 knocked out the German sub that was the lone German sub that was there he also took two infantry and dropped them off in the Dutch colony of Suriname eh, you know might as well incorporate the side of the board a little more that's also why we've made Chile and Argentina pro-axis, and they are staying pro-axis. Um, and uh, moving Air Force to Gibraltar. And then down here, we got ourselves the most exciting bit. Um, so the naval force from over here took out French Madagascar from the Vichy, took out the destroyer, the destroyer damaged his battleship, He's bought new units in South Africa. He's dropped off two, inf two other infantry. He dropped off in uh, Tan Tanganyika territory. And uh, then in Kenya, he attacked Kenya and Anglo-Egyptian Sudan. And without any casualties, um, overwhelmed the Italians and destroyed them. Bomber landing in Belgian Congo. This Frenchman has been progressively making his way across the continent. French fighter landing in Malta over there. Mike built a industrial complex in Persia. Took a tank, took eastern Persia. As you can see, Russians moved into northwest Persia. Um, let's see. I've recorded this a few times. This video a few times, so forgive me if I've repeated myself. Uh, the Italians moved in and took Alexandria. The Italians took over Transjordan and therefore closed the Suez Canal. Um, Will they hold it? Time will tell. Um, Vichy still having a grasp on the North African campaign area. Um, let's kind of go over here. So Germany declared war on Russia, top of round three. Attacked Karelia, attacked um, Eastern Poland and overwhelmed the Baltic states. Eastern Poland uh, Russia did take back with their air force and two uh, units, um, eliminating. I think there was one or there was one or two um, German infantry there. He's uh, bringing his stuff in from Russia, backing stuff out of Leningrad to Archangel. Rick loves to play with mech and tank. It's mech and tank, mech and tank, mech and tank all day. Japan also buying lots of mech, three at a time. As you can see, it's got a little train of mech going there. Let's see. Now I'm just going to go over the board. The French, uh, from their unit pool, placed their two destroyers in 87 this turn. So we're going we're gonna to get a, a trifecta of allies together. Okay, so that is the state of the board of the game. Oh, almost forgot this is why I put this here. So, technology. Russia started the game with improved mech infantry. However, uh, America, we, we rolled America's tech. Well, we'll do the rest of my turn later tonight. But America got long-range aircraft. Rick was very displeased to hear that. <laughs> 
So this is the state of the economy at present time of the game on the income tracker here. So fun stuff. Japan is on top of Germany. And uh, we've got Spain, China, and the UK Pacific stacked on top of each other right there. If you haven't seen this before, this is my magnetized income tracker slash roundel storage container. This is my box of chips. I just got the tech one stacked over there. All right. Okay, well, anyway, that, that does it for now. I'll be back in with another recap video either later tonight or tomorrow. Till then, uh, if, you're in a, if you're in a game, you know, don't do what I do. Roll the dice better. <laughs>